Hi, my name is Louise Pennison. I was diagnosed in 2019 with stage two breast cancer. When I received my diagnosis, I've always been um, just a positive person. And uh, my family, my husband and my daughters wanted to know if I wanted to go with them for my biopsy result. And being the strong person that you think you are, I decided I don't need anybody, I'll go by myself. <laughs> uh, and when uh, the doctor walked in and said, you have <laughs> breast cancer. I just took a deep breath and it didn't quite hit me. It was like somebody telling me that, you know, they had spaghetti for lunch. <laughs> um, it wasn't until I got home and I really started to um, process the information that I realized that um, I wasn't um, as strong as I thought I was. <laughs> that uh, I'm always the type of person to always be the helper, not the, I mean, the, you know, the one who gives and not the person who is the receiver. So it was really hard for me to settle into that role of being the patient. I was uh, really excited about the doctors that um, I, I believe that I prayed into existence. So my husband and I have always been in ministry and the first part thing we did was pray the second thing we did was, you know, ask God to direct our steps so that he would send the right surgeons and the right people into our lives. Unfortunately, when you have cancer, um, it can be a very lonely time. It reminded me a little bit of Katrina <laughs> because, you know, you want to say, why me? Um, but it rains on the just and the unjust. And um, I took it as a, um, a test of, well, God, what are you going to do now? And how are you going to use me through this process and through this experience? I did lose a lot of friends. I hate to say that that was a real sad time for me, mainly because people don't know how to talk to you or what to do to help you during that time. They can see how sick you are, how your body has changed, you lose your hair. Um, there's so many things that happen during this process and um, they really aren't prepared for it. So at first I took it very personal, but as you know, you heal and as you go through it, you give them grace. Um, I'm thankful for my two daughters. Uh, in the process of um, going through chemo, my fourth grandbaby was born, another boy, we have all boys, we're building a team. And uh, my two daughters um, each have two. And that was another sad time for me because, you know, when you're in treatment, you want to isolate. They want you to isolate and stay well. And uh, so um, I didn't get that time with him when he was little that I would have liked, but we're catching up now. My husband and I are high school sweethearts. He was the football captain and I was the cheerleader. <laughs> And um, we've just always had a fun life, but this was a time when it wasn't fun. Life wasn't fun. There wasn't the happiness that you expect. Although we were praying every day and we were standing on God's word because the doctor would come out and tell you something and we didn't receive it. We just kind of like said, okay, you know, if we receive it, then we accept it. And so we decided that we were gonna walk in faith. Our church supported us. Um, they uh, took care of us uh, with meals, and I want to thank them. Uh, but uh, I really appreciated the doctors that God put in my life. We uh, used Dr. Um, Emery Menard as my surgeon, and he was kind of partnered up with Dr. Tandon, Robbie Tandon. And you know, it's a really small world because uh, I can give you any advice, don't get in an elevator talking about anybody. <laughs> because they probably know who you're talking about. But Dr. Robbie Tandon ended up being a personal friend of another one of our high school buddies that is that, you know, still in our life. And I don't know, it was just a good connection. I trusted him. I, uh, he was uh, just amazing, to, you know, to my, you know, to, with my husband and I and in explaining everything. Uh, he was my reconstructive surgeon and his staff, very professional.
And if I could also brag on Dr. Emery Menard's staff, uh, Deanna, and the group that she has behind her is amazing. My hematologist and uh, where I got my chemo um, treatments was at West Jeff General Hospital. And um, unfortunately, the doctor who really treated me, who I really love, Dr. Del Toro, is not with them anymore. However, I am with Dr. Ellen now, and I really, uh, I really feel comfortable with her. Um, but my favorite nurse of all is Unika. And if, uh, if you ever have the, the, the pleasure of meeting her and her daughters, not, not in, a, in, a, in a cancer situation, but anywhere, uh, she is a delight and she is, um, she's called to nursing for a reason. She is really just amazing. I also want to do a shout out to Brandy at West Jeff, and I don't know her last name, but she was amazing as well. Um, now that we're kind of on the upswing of recovering, um, I feel like I'm going through a lot of body image things because, uh, you know, you worry a lot. You worry about if the cancer is going to return. You worry about every bump that you get. You worry about COVID. You worry about um, a lot of things that I never really worried about before. I used to just say I was invincible, but I know that we live in a very state of frailty also. Um, I can encourage anyone who's going through cancer to reach out to me. Uh, the best thing that's ever happened to me was Unite. Um, it's really united me to some wonderful friends. Um, I feel like they're sisters of mine, a kindred spirit, and it's been a blessing to me. Uh, I thank so much Lisa McKenzie for the work that she's doing. and. Um, I just, uh, I believe that it's a God-ordained or organization, and if you ever get a chance or, uh, or feel that you wanna to donate to any particular organization, send, send a payment, send, send, a, send a, a donation to Unite. It's amazing what they do for families, not just for those who had cancer, but we connect with those who, we've lost some friends this year through this organization. And we, we really do reach out to the families and it really is a, 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 a united front that we put, uh, you know, uh, that includes all of us and it gives us a place where we can talk about things that we can't just really talk about with the average person. You don't really know what it is that they go through until you go through it. So I've become more humble and I've become more appreciative and kiss your loved ones every day because tomorrow is not promised to any of us. I'm Louise Pennison, and this is my story.